So I've been working on my fireplace here and I need to get power up to where my TV is hanging on the wall. So what I'm going to do is take some standard 14 2 gauge wire and I'm going to run it into the crawl space where I'll find a power supply line to splice into. Now being that it's a crawl space, I'm sure there's going to be spiders down there, which means there's probably going to be screaming. All right, before you get started, the first thing you want to do is turn off the power to the wire you're going to splice. Make sure that the wires you're connecting are the same gauge. In this case, I looked for and found a 14-2 wire in my crawl space that had a bit of slack and happened to be on my living room circuit already. Now, once you've found your wire, pry off any surrounding staples holding it down. But before you cut anything, double check that the power is off with a voltage tester. Green means you're good to cut and red means the wire is still alive. After I cut my wire, I want to prep my junction box by popping out the knockouts. Just push them back and forth a few times until they break off. There are four knockouts on the perimeter of this particular box, but I'm only going to need three of them. I'll clip a conduit connector into each hole in order to hold my wires in place. Normally I would screw the junction box to the wall at this point, but I want to make sure I have enough wire to work with since I can't lengthen them. Once I have that sorted, I can add the conduit connector for the new wire running from my TV outlet. Make sure you fasten any new wire you're adding with cable staples. But when you do, do not hammer the crap out of them. One mistake I see a lot is that staples are hammered so tight that over the years, houses shift and the staples will cut into the wire. The purpose of those staples is just to keep the wire out of the way and that's all. The other thing about adding a junction box is that you never want to bury one in a wall or a space where you can't get access to it. It's fine to add one in your open crawl space or an attic, but if you need to add one in a wall, you'll need to place it in a way like you would a gang box for a light or an outlet, then put a cover plate over it. Once I have all my wires in place, I throw in a couple of screws to hold the box. Then I cut my new wire, but I'm giving myself lots of length because I need the ground wire to be longer. I'll show you why in a second. I take a sharp blade and cut the sleeve on each wire, then peel it back and trim it off. Once I have all the wires exposed, I cut back my extra long white and black wires, but I'm still leaving the ground wire long. I use my wire strippers to strip about a half inch off every white and black wire. But before I connect them, I take my long ground wire and I wrap it around the grounding screw to terminate the ground to the junction box. Make sure when you purchase a junction box that it actually has a grounding screw. Once I wrap the ground wire around the screw, I tighten it up with a screwdriver. Then I take all my ground wires and slide them one by one into a push connector. You can also use wire nuts or morettes, but I like the push connectors. I just find them easier to work with. Do the same with all the white neutral wires and all the black wires. When you're done, just fold all the wires inside the box, slide on a cover plate and fasten it with screws. All that's left to do now is to turn the breaker back on and you're all set. And oh yeah, watch out for those creepy little spiders on the way out.
Well, I hope you got something out of my dad's video. If you did, maybe consider subscribing and leaving a thumbs up. On the other hand, if you found my dad a bit bossy like I do sometimes, feel free to let him know in the comments below. See you next time. Bye!